Hello again everyone, Jim the IT Guy here with a sharp, short, simple video uh, on what is in this box from Sophos. Um, this is, as you may have already guessed by the video title, <gasps> um, a uh, Sophos SFP DSL module. It says so. On the packaging. Um, what this actually is, in its little neat box, get rid of that, uh, is uh, quite literally a module that plugs into the uh, Rev3 uh, 1 series Sophos XG appliances, so the uh, XG106, the XG125, the XG135 um, appliances, and allows you to plug a VDSL line straight into the module. Uh, this is just a quick show of what it is and uh, quickly setting it up. Uh, unfortunately, I can't actually get it to connect because I don't have a VDSL connection here. I I'm one of the lucky ones in the UK that is fibre to the premises. So, uh, can't do much about that. But uh, just quickly, I will uh, show you what this is and what it does. There is the actual module itself. Oh, hold it up to the camera the right way. Um, it is an SFP module. And uh, that uh, obviously you just plug a normal RJ11 cable into the, the front of and plug it into your VDSL connection. Um, what this little expensive-ish, this is uh, not the cheapest of uh, units, but they're about £170 for that, UK. Um, what this allows you to obviously do, however, is uh, not have to have the chain of normal modems or NTE VDSL devices chained after a firewall uh, for i.e. putting in a uh, business homes um, things like that so you're not having to mess around with uh, with additional devices you're needing additional plugs uh, additional troubleshooting when you're trying to find out why someone's internet connection has gone down so uh, I will show you where this goes into the back of uh, an XG135. I just happen to have one sat here and I have a, a 125 sat there as well. Um, ready to go into uh, some more customers' sites. And uh, I will then quickly run you through configuring it. Now for those of you unfamiliar with the Sophos uh, XG range physical appliances, uh, this, as I said, is an XG135 Revision 3. Uh, this is the, I suppose, the biggest of the small range. Um, it's actually uh, got an Intel Atom inside it and 6 gig of RAM. Um, but uh, as you can see from the back here, just to help sort of guide people around, you've got your power lead. Actually, as a quite a novelty, you can actually have a redundant power supply on this with two power supplies. Um, again, same on the XG125. You can have your two power supplies should you need to, and they're not astronomically expensive to replace. Uh, you've got your power button. This unit's on and booted at the moment. HDMI, if you're doing any troubleshooting reloading it. Uh, there is a breather hole. That's it. It's a hole. Uh, we have a USB port. We have the uh, COM port, which is shared with the RJ45 serial port there. So you can either plug in with a USB on that one. Uh, moving on, obviously, we have a USB port underneath it. We have the single SFP port, which is uh, the same on this device. Uh, it is the same on the XG125, which if I quickly pull the one I have on the shelf down you will see there is an XG125 as you can see exactly the same case work and the XG106 uh, also has an SFP port that is accepted that will accept this device and the XG106 will also accept uh, this little unit. Um, and on the back here we have um, eight RJ, uh, eight gigabit RJ45 ports. Um, one of the actual big differences when you set up the 135, 125 and the smaller actual XG units on the hardware appliances is uh, the actual installation wizard will bridge all the ports that you're not using as WAN ports 
by default into a switch. Um, just something to be aware of. Um, and then obviously on the end, we have the expansion module, which you can also slot a 4G card into. Um, again, maybe doing some more on that in the future, hopefully with some interesting projects upcoming for uh, some 4G based devices. But back to the Sophos VDSL SFP module. Um, quite literally, for those who have used SFP modules before, it looks fairly normal-ish, obviously a bit chunkier on this end because there's a VDSL modem built into it. But quite literally, it goes in the hole. Have I got it the right way? Yes, I have. And we have a little orange light, which I'll just move the camera on the side, which if you are using the unit, um, there are a few different colors that it will change. It will either be orange or it will be green. Uh, orange consistent is normal. And there is a status DSL light somewhere hiding on the unit, which will flash uh, slow blinking on idle, rapidly blinking when it's draining, um, constant when uh, it's obviously connected and then it uh, has a traffic notification blink which is like a normal rapidly blinking green light which just says that there's data going over it. Um, so there we go. Right, onwards to the configuration. Right, now here we are in the configuration of this XG. I've already gone through what I have done. Um, as I said, here is the bridge device. Um, that is bonding basically any port by default except port number two normally, which is the WAN port. I've unbound everything from that um, just to show you this. Uh, the SFP port on the XG125135 uh, is port nine. The SFP port on the XG106, uh, I believe, is shared with port four. So you either it's an either or. You either use the SFP port or the RJ45 port on that small unit. Um, but to set it up, all you do is go into port 9 on this one. Um, you set the network zone to WAN. You set the IP assignment to PPPoE, whereupon you get access to all the details. From there, the keyboard. And we can give this a gateway name of SFP. No, that's wrong. SFP. VDSL thing. Um, we can give it a username of username and a password of password. There you go. Um, but obviously, you would type in your proper username and password in here. Um, in fact, just to use one, or you can type in the BT one, which, if you were using BT at home, will be BT Home Hub at um, BT Broad. Band.com. Uh, it doesn't matter what you put in the password for that. That would just connect using it. If you're a BT subscriber in the UK, you can use that. Um, when you select the PPPoE DSL option, what it will enable is the DSL settings further on down, whereupon you can gain access to the VDSL checkbox. And in the VDSL checkbox, you can put in the VLAN tag for your provider. Now in the UK by default, if you are using BT or any open reach based service, uh, chances are that will be 101. So you just put 101 into there. There's no other advanced system and services you need to change. So all the settings and you would hit save, update the interface, and that would then configure the uh, SFP port ready for your modem. Um, now, this actual device may work in other ways and other appliances. I have seen them for sale and advertised uh, in different solutions. Um, it's quite an interesting sort of way of, of actually enabling you to save on having additional applications, but uh, here it is effectively set up, ready to go if I had a VDSL connection here in my house which I do not yet, but there we go. And as you can see, it's now saying connecting. We have a PPPoE connection. And if this was connected, it would now connect up and I would get an IP address in here. Um, what it would also show is in the WAN manager, again, port nine at the moment is disconnected and uh, my uh, 
actual WAN port on this unit is connected up to the internet via a different gateway. But there we go. Hopefully this is a useful thing if anyone is looking at the XG100 uh, series uh, and needs VDSL on the end of it. Um, as far as I'm aware, I have not tested this with the bigger appliances, um, but I cannot see any reason why it would not work in uh, something like a, an XG310. So uh, I may have to test that in the future. But uh, anyway, thank you for watching if you found this useful. Um, more Sophos videos to come as I have a few devices sat lying around. Um, please like, subscribe, um, trying to get uh, the, the count up on here so I can actually uh, start to leverage YouTube a bit better. Um, I'm also trying to stream with some useful sort of run throughs if and as and when people need some help. Um, so I will be here on streaming on YouTube or on Twitch. Um, but all my details are down below in the uh, in the comment section uh, or in the description section. So uh, please look me up and uh, I hope to see you again. Thank you for watching.